please excuse my very marvelous Mrs. Maisel appearance. I am setting my hair. So I've been trying to break down various elements you need to have an authentic 1940s makeup look. So to start out, I'm just going to apply my base. Typically a pancake foundation would have been used. I don't have anything heavy like that. So I'm just gonna use what I have, which is tinted moisturizer. In the 40s, foundation makeup was very limited. They either wore a pancake style foundation that was very heavy, and they also had some liquid foundations as well. One of the makeup brands that made cake foundations that's still around today is Max Factor. Now that we more or less have our base ready, I'm gonna start priming the lid with the eyeshadow concealer base. Since the foundations were quite heavy, they didn't really wear concealer, but I'm going to be priming the lid with this product to create a nice base for the eyeshadows. And for this makeup tutorial, I'll be using my Betty Davis palette from the Westmore Beauty Company. Since there was a lot of emphasis on a bold red lip, I'm going to keep the eyes in a natural color applying that neutral base shade all over the lid. Brighter pastels like blues and greens didn't make their appearance until the 1950s. And to line the brow, I'm using a wet angled brush and applying some of that brown taupe powder. You could say eyebrows were making a comeback in the 1940s, after the browless days of the 20s and 30s, but they were still very lifted, arched, and defined. I'm applying some more of that concealer underneath to give them a little bit more lift. Into the crease, I'm applying some of that taupey brown and blending it in. Popular eyeshadow colors would have been cool browns and misty grays. Adding just a hint of contour to the eye. I'm using a very dense fluffy brush to blend out those shadows. And just a little bit of that highlight color to the center of the lid and under the brow bone. To make your makeup look more authentic, something you'll want to avoid is using shimmer products. While they did highlight, it was more of a illumination and not a sparkle. For the eyeliner, I'm wetting the angled brush and applying some cake eyeliner to the upper lash line. The color of this liner is a dark midnight blue, but a brown or black cake liner could be used as well. Eyeshadow liners tend to have a more natural and blendable look and will add some authenticity to the eyes. Cream blushes were still all the rage in the 1940s, so I'm applying some cheek tint in the very berry color. Just using my fingers and applying in layers to get that opacity. There was a very heavy emphasis in the lash line, so I'm going to apply some natural but full false eyelashes. For a more toned down look, you could just use mascara, separating each individual eyelash. Contouring was definitely a technique utilized in old Hollywood, so I'm adding a little bit of that brown color to contour the nose, blending it out with a dense foundation brush. To add a little bit more definition, I'm highlighting the high points of the face with that light eyeshadow color. To remove all over shine, I'm setting the face with my Charlotte Tilbury Translucent Powder. Typically, a loose setting powder would be applied with a powder puff as the last and final step and then dust it away. I think the bold lip was one of the most iconic makeup trends of the 1940s. So to draw in that heart shape, I'm using a very sharp red lip liner. And for the lipstick, I'm applying Revlon's Certainly Red, a lipstick shade from 1946. I would describe it as a true red with a hint of patriotism since it came out following the end of World War II. To make the lip and cheek more consistent, I'm adding a little bit of that cheek tint on top and dusting on a little setting powder to finish it off. I hope you enjoyed this 1940s makeup tutorial and that you found it helpful. And if you're curious to see how this hair set turned out, you can look for that in my next video.